Eva Saba and her husband Edward opened Gigi's Sandwich Shop in Lawrence, Massachusetts in the late 1950s. They say that they invented the first pocket sandwiches known in this country and named them Flying Saucers. Eva was born in 1916 to Lebanese immigrant parents and grew up in Lawrence. We visited her in January 1987 to document the love, caring, and expertise that she has poured into her business, which it seems is more of a community center than just a sub shop. Welcome to Gigi's. <laughs> so, so how did you ever get to be called Gigi? So, oh, right. that, that's uh, Gigi, my daughter's uh, nickname, uh -huh. Gigi, when she was very young. Her father used to call her Gigi. And when he opened up this business and started up, he thought he'd name it after Georgiana. So that's how, that's that's how, how we got the name Gigi. So we've had customers day in and day out, year in and year out. Uh, thank God we've never lost a customer for a bad sandwich, <laughs> really. It's over customer. the years, it's become almost an international it thing, is. too, because uh, people have gone uh, all over the country. And in fact, different parts of the world with sandwiches. Our sandwiches are flowing sandwiches to London, to, to uh, Puerto Rico, to, to England, throwing sandwiches out to uh, Texas. Our customers, you know, our uh, previous customers, always. And every t anytime anyone ever hit Lawrence, this is the day you'd be lying to. Oh, uh, so happy to see you. You're still here? Oh. <laughs> I just want to ask you this one story about, what about Everett? Everett. Oh, Everett came into my life when he was about seven years old. So tell us that story. And I was in the lower part of Broadway here. Mm -hmm. And he used to come in, and he was a Gabby kid. Mm -hmm. He used to like, like to talk and talk and talk. And I uh, used to come in and keep me company. In those days, I used to be working alone up there. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, I'd treat him. Mm -hmm. And uh, it made the night pass on you know, pass away. Then one day... But he was only seven? He was seven. Wow. Yeah, and then he went away, and uh, I, I lost track of him. So this one Sunday he called me up, and he was about 10 years old at the time. And I discovered in the meantime he had lost his mother. And uh, he asked me for a job. <laughs> he says to me, Gigi, do you remember me? I says, who are you? He says, my name is Everett. Now, how could I forget a name like that? Really? <laughs> it's the only Everett that I ever knew in my life. So, I told him, sure, come, on, come down. So he came down, and he sat in his room and crashed away, and uh, helped me out in his little way. And uh, then he grew up honest, and I discovered he was living alone, so. We took him in, and my son and I we used to drive him back and forth to school. And uh, my gosh, before you knew, he was a, a young man. Mm -hmm. And uh, he helped us out considerably, and vice versa. I mean, he uh, became part of the family. So he's really like he's still, Yeah, definitely. Ma opened the sandwich shop in Ma, Ma and Dad in the early, in late 50s. And uh, by around 1960, they opened in this area, and this was the first sign in this area. So this is a dated about 1960, 62, in that range. And uh, these are hand-painted signs from the Pepsi company in those days, and you can see the difference in the p price. This is called a flying saucer, and you can understand yeah, they, why they'll, by the shape. send you into Robin. <laughs> She's been selling these for almost 30 years. And you're, you're, I was you're, you're, brought, you're, brought up on that. Cheese, or you're veg, you know, you're che if it's a vegetarian or eggplant or a hot sandwich, and you just kind of lay it in there very nicely, and then you can figure out the stuffing. Mm -hmm. And this is what's made by Mother's oh. Shop so famous. Uh. That's why it's called the home of the flying saucer. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And don't Jay, eat without having one. <laughs> this here is a hot. With the, this, you're out of business. This here is a, in constant use. This is where we do all our slicing, our steaks, <coughs> our cold cuts, our cheese, name it. Everything, without this, we cannot operate. I use that for kibbe. I mix my kibbe in it. 
20 well, years ago. The meat is so cold when she prepares it. I used it. to mix it with my she, hands. She has arthritis. Yeah. We have the, uh, you know, a big dish pan or so whatever, and you mix it like you mix your dough and everything, right? It would, it would take hours well, to mix that. My daughter got a brainstorm, and she got me to mix it. Well, when I first got it, they brought it through my rear door. And I looked, and I said to myself, what on God's earth is that monster coming here? What are you bringing? What have they brought thought of? I was really very pushed out. Uh -huh. And now it's invaluable. I couldn't do without it. Mm. All right? This here is really a uh, charmer, believe me. We make our steaks, our hamburgers, name it. This here takes care of it all. And uh, this is a fryer later. And we do our french fries, our veal cutlets, our sausages, our hot dogs, uh, whatever, anything that requires frying, french fries. And this is the oven, uh, what we call a pizza oven. And in here, I have placed in a kibbe, that's where I make my famous kibbe and salad. And, uh, all right, we line it up with kibbe. Uh, this is our most most popular sandwich. This is what made us. Okay? And that's how we see it. This is how it is. And we make we mix a little hot salad and uh, we fill it up as you can. Okay. This is a meal in itself. Maybe. They come from all over for this sandwich. We wrap it, we hold it. We wrap it. They come for that sandwich as far away as Boston. Yeah. This local Boston. area. Concord, New Hampshire, down the other way. Manchester. We have a fellow that calls every uh, Friday night from Hudson, New Hampshire, for one uh, Gibby sandwich. They come from New Jersey when they're following you, right? They're in the area. Yeah, oh, when they're in the area. Uh, <laughs> they come from Lynn. They make a special roof all the way from Lynn, Dallas Vale, whatever. This is how it looks when it's all wrapped up. So, it's Joey cool. and David, do you want to tell us what your favorite food is here? Okay. What's your favorite food here? Okay. Hamburg. Why do you like you, the hamburger? Well, how about when you ask me, what do you like, Joey? Um, boiled eggs. Boiled eggs? <laughs> yeah, but who likes the How often gibby? do you ask me for raw like kibbe? <laughs> Every time I have sitho, have you got raw kibbe? Do you like yeah. sitho's raw kibbe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tom, you like everything about sitho's cooking, mm -hmm. right? He's, he's learned how to cook, too, now, huh? He works on the grill. My son can, can see. That's how it's tra uh, transgenerational. Daddy, I can cook French fries. And they're very proud. Now, these are things that a lot of parents, adults, wouldn't let kids around. But we supervise them carefully. My mother, down to us, down to the children. And that's how I learned. We learned uh, there's so many values and basics in life, the skills that can be taught in a business like this. My mother taught us economics. She taught us sociability, how to get along with people. She taught us um, uh, the basic skills of cooking, of uh, handling customers, and therefore it's uh, given us an opportunity to make a living for our own families. I think the thing we learned most was love. And that that is what I think is missing in the world, and that's what I learned from love, this woman. Love. That family and love is what is missing Closest. in this world. Closest. And a lot of people think I'm crazy to spend so much time with my family and my mother, but I know that I, my mother will always be there. All the glitter and uh, riches that mean a lot to other people mean nothing to my mom. It's the little things, the kiss on the cheek, the thank you, Sipto, uh, which means grandmother in uh, Lebanese, uh, the little visits, as you see, you've seen from the family, the grandchildren buzzing around her feet, the real riches in life, uh, the beautiful little things you get uh, from love.